Wednesday morning. I'm already on my second tank of gas. I'm sure Dad's not far behind me. It's a uh, pretty slow cutting this morning just because I'll show you real quick. Walnut tree there. Walnut tree there. Walnut tree there. And this devil. I'm kind of cutting all around it. Walnut tree there. So several more back through here. Got one on the ground there. See all the tops through there and on up there. So you kind of got to kind of got to go easy on them because you you'll bury these things just mowing trees down so just kind of waiting on kevin to get back here and get another drag for the next victim falls and this one here kind of worries me see that y crotch there i'm hoping i can lay it flat on this side that's what i'm hoping i'm going to leave a little bit of hold wood on the back side and hopefully i can twist it around um, good stuff you can see the quality there dark thin sapped real good quality logs some big trees up here to cut yet probably some of the better ones i know dad's cut a couple of real big ones this morning uh, i think kevin's had two drags for one tree at a time's always struck out so uh, pretty good drags for the 440 especially so we'll wait till he gets back and we'll Hook these couple here up for him. And we'll just kind of play the waiting game. I can't wait to bring this one down. That's a heck of a tree. Waiting on Kevin. Here he comes. This is the one Dad just brought down. Good stuff. Pretty good stuff. Bark's still slipping a little. And I would say it's gonna for probably at least the next month. Maybe a month and a half. A pretty good sticks of wood there. They've got a good size to them, but what really what they've really got going for them is how clean they are. And the color. The color and the sap mean a lot as well. There's just so many variables with walnut. It, it's not like when we cut oak timber. Oak, maple, ash, stuff like that's pretty cut and dry. Where your walnut, there's a ton of variables. A ton of variables on what the log is going to bring. And yeah, it's going to start with the size and quality, but after that, we're going to get down to sap line. We're going to get down to growth rings. We're going to get down to color. I mean, there's a lot of factors, and inches matter. Every inch matters on length and on diameter. Of course, your length, you've, you've got to go with even measurements like your, your feet. Most of our cuts are 8s, 9s, 10s, 12s, and then multiples of 16 and longer. But it's never an exact cut. There's never any logs that are exactly 8 foot, exactly 9 foot. They've got to be 8, 6, 9, 6, 10, 6. When we get into multiples, we usually allow a little bit more than six. So Kevin's got these couple out of the way here now. Let me size up old big boy. I think I can lay it right in here, but still got one more. What I love about cutting places like this is... Uh, you know, from the road, you really, this just looks like a kind of a barren piece of ground with some scrub brush on it. Well, until you get in a place like this where there's just a, a draw, little little trickle of water. See a pretty good tree over there. And I've cut a couple decent trees. My saw is right there, ready to cut that tree. But what I noticed was this tree. That hog. Right here on the bank, got a hard lean back in here. And then, as I'm looking on out through the timber here, 
I see some more big trees on down here. I don't know how far this draw goes. Like I said, this is a, each step I take in this direction, it's a new territory for me because I've never been here. Watch out for holes like that or sneaky snake might be down there. We have yet to see any rattlers, but uh, I'm on high alert. And part of me, like, you know, I'd, rattlesnakes here in this part of the world just kind of seem like one of those, oh, majestic great white buffaloes, so to speak. You hear about them, and I've seen them before on job sites, but you don't see them very often. But we have seen them over right here along the Missouri-Kansas line before, and big ones. I mean big snakes, five, six-footers. Which for a rattlesnake, you probably shouldn't screw with them because they, they probably don't want to be bothered and snake that big. Probably got daggers for fangs. But back to walnut, looks like there's several more out in here. Me and Dad were thinking we'd get pretty close to finishing up on the cutting side today, but I don't think that's going to happen because we've still got several trees back this way and several back up the other way from uh, where we started this morning. Like I said, you got to be so, so careful. Cutting walnut can be very time consuming just because you don't want to get too carried away. Like I was getting ready to cut this tree, then I got to look and I'm like, well, I need to be careful cutting that because I don't want to fall it into this or fall it too close to it. And, but at the same time, I'd kind of like to put that top right out here to cushion the blow from this tree. And I think I can swing that tree back in here. I don't really see anything that makes me worry about busting that tree, which is good, but still, them big trees like that, you like to have a little cushion for them. Kevin's on his way back right now. I hear him up there, so I kind of gave him some direction on what to what logs to get next. I think I'm going to try to whittle this one down real quick, and I'm probably about ready for a fuel up after that. I think I can lay him right over in here. We'll be good to go. She's down. That was a little nerve-wracking. I hate that I'm not getting some of this on video because I would have liked to have this one filmed for you guys to see, just for me to watch. Kind of like a coach or an athlete watching film. I like to sometimes watch what I'm doing. If I can see mistakes, I can then learn from and correct them. You can see the old sauce steaming there a little. We put a little oil on her last time I spilled a bit. Should be all right, though. Good tree. Incredible tree. Uh, definitely the best tree I've cut in quite some time. As far as size and quality. Got a good low cut. You can see there's a little bit on this side. But on the back side, we were, we were pretty much as low as we could go on the back side over there. Even bore. See all the way through. Good flush. Even cut no fiber pull no nothing i i took the time to make sure that uh we weren't have to worry about fiber pull now when it did come down i tried to leave just a little bit on the spur on the back side to get it to twist it didn't twist quite like i wanted it to but luckily i cut the slim off it didn't hurt the main body with this little limb here it popped and busted and we could have made a small log out of this and you guys know me i hate to I hate to lose anything, but in the grand scheme of things, I would much rather lose this little limb here than uh, damage the main body. And a lot of times, especially if we're really if we're really concerned and really think they're problematic trees, I mean, Dad could have got this down. Probably no, he, he probably could have set a a screw or a nail out here and Dad would have pounded it in the ground, cutting this tree wherever you set it. But a lot of times on problem trees, we really think on high dollar walnut, they're going to be a problem with a bust. We've climbed trees. We've got bucket trucks. We've got to pit them and top them. Uh, we do that sometimes. Sometimes you have to to ensure that you're not going to ruin a good tree. A lot of lumber in the top of this tree. Kevin is not going to like dragging this out because it's going to have this Y crotch right here because this is a good log right here. We'll take it up here to the fork. We'll trim that off flush. We want these logs round, so that'll be cut flush with the tree. Same deal on the other side here. We'll trim that big limb off there, which is starting to show some signs of decline, just like that one there. And then we'll cut off way up there to try to maximize footage on this beast. This, like I said, is a beast of a tree. 
that uh, that has got a heck of a 12 foot veneer log in it. She's going to be double hearted probably, I'm guessing at least up into here she'll be double hearted so we should be well over, I'd say this is probably in the 14 foot mark right here so like I said we'll get a good, should be good center square hearted 12 foot veneer cut on it. So yep heck of a tree i've uh i was a little nervous about getting that one cut as you can tell i've cut everything all around it kind of saving it for last right here and we've got a couple busters on up here that are this big or bigger so uh, dad didn't get to cut all the gravy on this job but it takes some time to look at the butt here i had my saw up there for just kind of reference good color no decline in the heart, even though we've got some dead limbs, starting to show some dead limbs. Good centered heart on it. Fairly close growth rings for what it is. Not a terrible amount of sap. And we'll take the saw and we'll actually clean this up. We'll round this stump a little bit. That's just merely for presentation. So, yeah, that is a, that's a peach. I know what, uh, when, when you know you got trees to cut like that, it makes, it makes sleeping at night hard and getting up to go to work pretty easy because, man, there are nights, just like Monday night and last night, I, I had trouble sleeping just then, just for in the anticipation. It's just like a, a kid, kid on Christmas or waiting for Christmas. It, uh, I love getting to cut stuff like this. I love getting to cut it with my dad. You know what? It, it means the world to me to get to do that every day. I'm very fortunate. So I'll finish getting this worked up, and Kevin should be back here before long, and we'll get him to hook on, because I've got several down up here ahead of us. You can see the holes in the canopy where I've been cutting, so we'll get her worked up and get ready for the next set. We're back from lunch. Kevin's taking a couple out right there. Good little trees. Now before he hooked up to these, I took the skitter and pushed out around a walnut over here. I'm getting ready to go cut. And uh, when he comes back, I'll have him grab that one you see there. And I'll have him grab this other big one I'm gonna cut over here. Now like this tree here, we'll cut it last because it's gonna block our road up. Good little logs. Dad's went in for the day. Unfortunately, our nice, cool, fall-like weather is not going to last here about the end of the weekend. She's going to start getting back up in the 90s again, and we'll be cussing the heat. It, uh, it sure has been nice the last few days. It's been nice to have this fall-like weather. It feels like fall. It really does. Driving down the road, it just uh, air is kind of crisp and clean. Then cutting walnut on top of that. Feels like fall. When we got back from lunch, I had a bunch of logs bucked, and I went ahead and laid them out uh, with the deer. Well, I guess the skid steer deer, the 333. Just trying to get a feel for it, see how she's going to do in sorting logs. A little different than the cat, a little different. Pros and cons. Those little 440s are good walnut skitters. They're slow is the only thing I don't like about them. I know I've said that in several videos. The uh, Standard shift transmission is the only thing, I mean the only thing I do not like about them. They're just slow. Power shifts, uh, you'll make twice if not three times as many drags in a day with a power shift transmission. You can always find the gear you need. I'm going to park up here out of the way. Actually, Kevin's bouncing on her. He gets nervous real easy. Let's see if we can just... There he goes. Told you 
cool when he makes those steep turns like that below keep that blade down he can bounce off that blade he don't much like that either so so many good little walnut trees left in here to grow love to see that this tree in question's right there in the middle you can kind of see it through the brush there peeking through right in yep, right there right there dirty finger and all we're gonna run down here and whittle it down real quick and that way when he comes back I'll uh, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do this how I'm gonna have him get two logs I might have him grab that one first and he can make a, a sweeping turn over there I don't know we'll see we'll get it down regardless I'm getting up close to five o'clock I think we'll make one more drag Head her in for the day because we're not going to get nowhere close to finishing anyway. Where I left off cutting, I think I see at least a dozen to 15 more trees right there in that area. Uh, and I think there's some on the other side of the, of the ditch down through there as well. So tomorrow, we'll try to get everything finished up right here in this area. We've got a couple more real big ones to cut, uh, similar to what we cut today. Then, uh, yeah. We'll uh, see what we have on the footage. I'm, I'm guessing uh, probably upwards of 13,000, 14,000 feet is what I'm guessing right now. Uh, tall trees, got some size to them. Footage adds up fast. Which anymore, if you, uh, you cut a job of one that's 10,000 feet or plus, that's a pretty good job of walnut. So, we'll get these logs hooked up for Kevin. We'll follow him out. Take a look at the deck. Stuff that's come out and hadn't been bucked yet. And uh, stuff that has been bucked. Get them out here. Let the air and the sun hit them. Turn them a pretty dark chocolate color. Need to do a little trimming up on some of them. For the most part, pretty good shape. Pretty good set of logs. Don't mind the hole in that one. Don't mind that. <laughs> yeah, that one's got a bad spot in her. next to the skid steer here. Call tonight. See you tomorrow, guys. Hey, guys. If you like what you see, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for all of our latest videos.